the church in the 50s getting a local church into a national BBC is never it's just never going to happen really but now there's a great opportunity because of the internet and because of the new media that is so available to different people and because anyone can really make a media and anyone can send their own message out there it's a big opportunity for church so what's to that going to look Hello and welcome to Independence, the FIEC podcast. My name is Adrian. I'm head of National Ministries for FIEC and I'm joined today by Phil Topham, who's our executive director. Hello, Adrian. Hello, Phil. And by Joel Murray, who's our communications guru. Now, you've got a proper title, but we call guru. you our communications guru. I'll be a really. guru, I don't You'll mind. You'll be a guru. Hello. Um, now, we're talking about a, quite a niche subject today, but actually mm. a really important one, which is we're trying to help think through how churches can engage with their local communities through media, old yeah. media, new media. We'll think about a bit a bit about that as we go along. But it's worth just saying, um, we, we've got a background here, haven't we, in media. Yep. So it's worth just um, saying, you know, we, we do know a little bit about what we're talking about, just a, <laughs> just a little. Um, we've all been involved in various kinds of media, some of us a long, long time ago. We've all got faces for radio. That's the first thing to say. Absolutely true. And um, that's pretty important. You'll see that if you're watching um, live on video. Phil, just give us a little bit of background so we can know a little bit about who you are and your experience? Uh, well, I trained as a journalist, uh, specifically as a radio journalist. So I did that from... About Was that driven by the face for radio? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely right. Um, but, you know, from, from about 2002 until about 2011, so about nine years, I worked on the radio. So I read the news for radio stations. I did football commentary, um, sports reporting, all that kind of thing. So, yeah, that was um, that was a very exciting period of life. But that's what I used to do. I'm very impressed by the sports commentary because I've mm. I've always thought that's a really hard skill remembering the names and you've probably got some stories. Uh, many many <laughs> stories. I remember once having to ask um, one of the Everton coaches to plug my uh, feed back in as it <laughs> as it come out. So I got to nudge this guy who's who's gathering all the statistics to take into the Everton dressing room and Muggins here is asking him to uh, plug my feed back in. <laughs> so um, off. Phil's book <laughs> When Radio Goes Wrong is available for more good bookseller. Oh, yeah. And and Joel, just tell us a little bit about your background. You've, you've joined the FIC fairly recently, actually. So tell us uh, where you came from to yeah. come and join us. I studied media production, which was from studios like TV shows uh, through to doing films and radio and all that kind of stuff. I did digital media in my last year, which was a specialist. And I was doing digital marketing, which was, it was mainly digital, but it was all sorts of uh, PR and stuff. I think my my favourite memory is giving a interview to the local TV station on the walls of Lincoln Castle talking about dogs. Wow. Does it, I, I, yeah. I, there's a number of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want to start? Uh, <laughs> Link, Lincoln has a local TV station. Yeah, well, it's BBC. Oh, I see. All right. Look north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cover Lincolnshire. Fantastic. Good. So I've got the BBC established man on my left, mm. and I've mm. got the kind of heart FM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the commercial um, man. The Very commercial much man. The my, commercial I, man. I, yeah, yeah. My only link really to me, well, I've a, a long a long time ago, um, I was once asked by Mohammed Al Fayed to run his radio station for him. Wow. That's it. That's the level of my expertise. <laughs> um, the story, the short story, I said no. And uh, here I am working for the FIEC. I thought you were going to say <laughs> Mohammed Ali then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was slightly more. Well, anyway, we won't get into that story right now. Um, what do we mean by lo What do we mean by media? Joel, just help us understand that a little bit. Perhaps some people's minds immediately go to kind of stuff that's happening online. Other people will immediately think, um, you know, local TV station, for example. Mm. What do we mean when we talk about local media? Media is uh, messages. So someone sends a message from one place to another. So uh, traditionally in the past, it would be the big broadcasters, the newspaper that, that prints millions and then sends it across the country. They've got a message. They send their message through their newspaper to all the people. And then that's um, kind of developed. So it's gone into television. So the TV will have a message and they'll send it through television to the people. And then you get the big broadcasters. So BBC, of course, were the, were the main ones. Um, you've got the commercials that Phil knows all about. Mm. Mm. who'll make money out of sending particular messages and that's where it starts to get a little bit yeah complicated complicated yeah. that's right yeah because they're, they're sent they've got to send the messages that'll get them money so yeah. you got to always be a bit careful so newspapers is the very traditional one it goes into television so um you'll have the news and uh, all sorts of other things on bbc itv channel 4 and the hundreds of channels now that you could find mm. and then of course the most recent one would be internet internet yeah. media yeah. 
So a lot of the newspapers can't sell the newspapers anymore because no one wants to read anything on a piece of paper. They want to look on their tablet or their computer. So a lot of them have now moved onto the internet as well and subscription methods and things like that. But it's also the internet is also the equalizer. So yeah. in Lincoln, in my experience, there is a great website called The Lincolnite, which was hyperlocal. So it was a really great website and they were journalists specifically for Lincoln. And because it was so niche, it was different to anything out there. And it really connected with people. But then, of course, they become a very, very big, big thing in Lincoln. And, um, yeah, there's all sorts of all sorts of people going on. They've got a message to tell and they want to send it in all different ways. Uh, newspapers, radio, television, online, all sorts. And then we can go into social media, which is a whole other ballgame. Yeah. And we will, we will in just a short it's, while. It's just worth saying, just to, to defend the commercial stations just for a moment, <laughs> there, there, are, there are sort of standards that you have to adhere to when, sure. you're, when you're in the media. So it's not like it's a free for all on commercial because they've got to make money. There, there is still Ofcom, uh, other regulators that would make sure that the messages were not causing any kind of problem and, and that, that, that kind of thing. There is a legal basis on which you uh, you, you put your messages out. So yeah, just to, just to stand yes. in the commercial yeah. corner yeah. there for a second. There it's are not Radio standards. Caroline, is no, it? No, it's exactly. Kind of out there, on the, on, yeah, on the there, ship. Yeah. There, are, there are standards. The, yeah. f- the first question we'd be asked every week in team meeting was, is there any Ofcom issues? The you know, okay, point being, sure. that is something yeah. that would happen on a week-to-week basis that could disrupt things. So there are standards still. Now, Phil, I've, I've kind of got this vision of the local newsroom, you know, a bustling um, local newspaper with 50 journalists, um, you know, all with a, a fag in their hand, pint of beer. <laughs> Um, and it, you kind of think, how on earth can a church engage with that sort of, um, you know, huge enterprise? Is that what local media is like? I think it's worth saying it used to be. So I think there was a time when there would be, uh, at every kind of radio station and newsroom, there would be multiple journalists working on multiple stories. But inevitably, as there has been more and more uh, media outlets uh, and more and more people demanding that attention, uh, that's obviously been streamlined. So what you end up with now is much fewer fewer kind of centralised newsrooms, particularly in sort of local radio and local newspapers, and actually perhaps only one or two journalists Mm. who are covering a huge patch uh, and essentially churning out stories uh, multiple times uh, for different sort of expressions of local media. But, But it's not the case to say say the you know the local paper you get through your door there are not 50 journalists sat behind that who are producing the content for it more likely there is a couple of journalists who are producing content not just for that local paper but maybe for lots of other local papers as well and there's a sense in which it's all been streamlined that's the same that's happened that's happened in commercial radio as well there used to be um, multiple journalists across multiple sites now there are much fewer journalists across fewer sites and um, for example some of the news you hear on a local radio station might not be coming from the locality that's broadcasting to it might come from 50 miles away. Uh, and that's that was all down to kind of the financial crash in 2008. And that streamlining took place even further. So there are fewer and fewer jobs for people in media. I think I read a stat, Joel, you might know this as well. I think it's something stupid like there are more media studies courses in the country than there are jobs in the media. More media studies courses than, courses. There, yeah, than there are jobs in the media, <laughs> which is an extraordinary thing to say. But if you, t- if, if you take every school that does it at A-level or GCSE or whatever it is, there are actually more courses for people to study than there were jobs. Okay, so we've left the glory days behind. Uh, that was fair. That, <laughs> that, 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 that was, Phil, that's an opportunity for, for churches mm, locally mm, mm. in terms of producing content, isn't it? Just oh, I, th- talk I think us through so. That. Yeah, I think so. So I think what you've got in reality is you have got a very small number of people receiving multiple messages from multiple directions. They're having to um, streamline that and, and sort of put it through a funnel to decide what makes it into their newspapers or into their news bulletins. They're getting dozens and dozens of emails um, um, letters every day and they've got to try and funnel that into something relevant so you've got an opportunity to stand out and to help that journalist to say oh hang on that's a story about the location I'm covering and that is something that I can easily turn into copy for my newspaper mm. it's not just something that's churned out from a PR firm it's actually just explain what copy story. is so sorry copy is uh, the, the stuff that you write or the stuff that so you broadcast content broad essentially, content, content, essentially. Yeah. essentially. Yeah. Okay. so they can turn it into something more quickly and if you have um, put your, your location in there your locality if you are genuinely something different that is going to stand out because they're getting reams and reams of stuff that's coming from okay. big PR firms just to try and, and essentially yeah. put sort of what we call puff pieces into the news which are just so, essentially um, adverts we've got an example of that haven't we just mm. locally we've mm. uh, um, I mean it's a kind of a story that's personal to you and I Phil yeah. we've yeah. just had a new pastor appointed at the church 
And we, we wrote we wrote a little article for the local press and we sent it into them. Yeah. They pretty much printed it verbatim. Yeah, almost, they? absolutely. So they only changed a few sort of words in it here and there, really. And it was excellent. So I interviewed uh, the new pastor. Uh, there was some quotes from him in there. Sorry, I, the, the, the article was excellent. You wrote it. No, 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 no. It was excellent that they printed it <laughs> okay, almost verbatim. It. it was I'm also felt an excellent article. Oh, well, well, well there we are. But, but, but the reality is uh, we were able to, to put some quotes uh, into the article. We sent it to the local newspaper and as you say, yeah, they, they, they printed it for us. And the reason they did is because it was something that was local interest, something that was new and something that was first. We can perhaps talk a little bit about that. There are some tips and tricks to help you to stand out from the crowd. But um, yeah, it was it okay. was something we were Let's able to Let's come back to the mm. tips and tricks. I mean, Joel, it seems to me there's a great opportunity here for churches, actually, who want to get a message out. I mean, we're going to have to, be, you know, we have to be careful. We can't just send in an article that says, here's the gospel. But in terms yeah. of promoting things that the church are, are doing and perhaps, you know, Christmas events, Passion for Life events, there's a great opportunity here, isn't there? Yeah, those uh, those annual things like Christmas and Easter yeah. and summer holidays and all that kind of stuff, all, all the local media, especially local, have their roundups. Here's all the things to do at Christmas. Here's all the things to do at Easter. Here's all the things to do in the summer holidays, half term, all that kind of stuff. So if you can link in some an activity that you're doing in your church to something like that, send it in to the people, then they're like, great, you've done a job for us. We don't have to do the Absolutely. research ourselves. Yeah. You told us what it is, we can add it into ours and then we've got stuff for our people to read. So that's a really good So is it better to get things like that in before the event rather than after? So yeah, for example, I mean, I could write a report, couldn't I, of, you know, a holiday Bible club or something, but that's going to be less of less value, isn't it, than saying, here's a holiday Bible club coming up? I would say so, because the media want it to be useful to people who are, who are reading and watching, because otherwise, if it's useful, they're going to read and watch again in the future. Mm. So if you can be as helpful and useful to to general public as possible, then that's uh, that's the best way to do something, I would say. Yeah. I, and, I, that's really helpful, because that's events-based. So if you've got an yeah. event coming up that you can advertise, you always want to do that beforehand. And the, the example with our pastor, that would have actually have worked after the event, because actually it's ongoing. So yeah, it, it's yeah. a moment in time mm. which, which, you know, he's still going to be the pastor in the weeks to come. So actually that still works. But yeah, when it comes to say, you know, Christmas services, local newspapers will just print those. Yeah. So if you've got a carol service and you let the local media know, they would put it in that kind of roundup article, mm. I think. I'd have so a, he, sorry, go on, Joel. So I have a good example of uh, maybe a, another ministry that, you, that a church is doing that you can latch on to. So for example, um, another one in Lincoln, there is a, a problem with homelessness in the city and everyone's thinking, well, how can we do it? And trying to say, do we just, get, just try and get rid of the homeless people? No, that's not the right thing. But then all, it's such a complicated issue. But there was a local church who were doing a specific ministry to homeless people they were offering um, breakfast and bringing them into the church building and drawing alongside them and doing really great work and then suddenly that was a really great opportunity for them to say hey there's this topic that's important to the local people mm. here's something that we're doing to engage with it and then of course the gospel comes into it because why are you doing this well it's because we want to show the love that we know from Jesus to to those around Absolutely. I, I guess you've got to have a sense of realism mm. um, you, you might put in at the end we're doing this because you know we believe that Jesus came into the world and loves and saves and so we want to bring this gospel of great news to people. They're likely just to edit that out, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I, I think so. I think we've got to be really careful that we understand what the media is there for. So I've sat in conversations like this before. I remember doing a, a men's evening with a church and essentially one of the guys chastised me and the guy I was hosting it with because we didn't uh, broadcast the gospel every time we we, we put the fader up to, to read the news. And that's really not what we're there for. We're there to read the news. We're there to do our job. We're not there to share the gospel through that medium. So you've got to bear that in mind as, as well. I think it's really important that you use that wisely and sensibly and actually build up a rapport with your local newspapers, your local free papers, your local magazines. How might you do that? Well, I think it's just about drip feeding things in that are, are interesting to them uh, and make sure that you are affirming of the work that they do. So I think it is a, it's hard work being a journalist, actually. Uh, it's really um, difficult to just continually go through all the churn. And actually, when you are told you've done a good job, that's actually a nice thing to hear. Well, you know that if you're a pastor listening to this, you know that. You know that it's great to hear uh, affirmation after you've preached. It's the same thing if you're working as a journalist. You're constantly putting things into the public domain. So you're building up a relationship with a, a local journalist, an email every now and again, enjoy the latest issue of the paper, for example. That kind 
kind of thing would be great. Um, yeah. yeah, but I think it's just, just to caveat that slightly, there's high staff turnover in some of these places. So it might be that you're building a relationship sure. with someone and they're not sure. there anymore. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, and also it's important to say that you you, you could become annoying <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah. People are, and people are busy. Yeah. But but I think just just drip feeding in those interesting stories, interesting local things that you're, you're doing. So have you got a stall at the Christmas market? Are you doing an Easter egg hunt for the kids? Are you doing a holiday Bible club in, in the summer? That, those kind of things are yeah. interesting. Interesting yep. and actually help to serve the community. And should should leaders of local churches be accessing local media themselves regularly, Joel? It's not it's not just a something to use, is it? It's something to engage with more broadly. Yeah, I think the local media will have their finger on the pulse of what's important for the community and what people are interested in, because that's gonna that's gonna be the thing they want to to read. So being able to understand that from your culture, it's very, very easy to kind of get stuck in, in the church bubble and then not be able to see what what else is going on that's a really helpful thing because your your congregation and your members are going to be those people who are interested in those topics mm. so if there's something specific or something really important that's going on potentially that's something that needs to be addressed from from the front or maybe it's something that's going to cause pastoral issues down the line so i think that's really important to do so, so buy then, your local paper certainly Perhaps, yeah, uh, yeah yeah follow the feeds on on their on their websites um, listen to the local news, the local BBC and things like that. And Phil, uh, we've talked a little bit here about press, especially, yeah. and we're thinking about local papers. Is is the same true local radio, perhaps even local TV? Um, I, yeah, I, I think so to a point. I think local radio is much more streamlined than it used to be. So I think you're in a situation now where um, the news is not as local as it once was. No, so they're so taking on, a central feed. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah not, sure. it's not as local as it once was on commercial radio stations. What is worth looking out for is if you've got local community stations. Um, so here in, in Market Harbour, we've got Harbour FM. Um, I think I'm right in saying that's a community station. Um, I could be wrong. Yeah. Forgive me I, if I, I am. I kind of want you with your radio voice to go close to the microphone and say, Harbour FM. Harbour FM. Brilliant. That, yes. yeah, thank that you. was yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, but, but, but I think, you know, um, th- this episode kind of- is worth it just for that, <laughs> by the way. I think. They, they are, the, 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 the sort of, um, the local stations like that, the community radio stations, they're run by volunteers. Mm. Um, and what that means is that they want to be as uber local as possible. So you're much more likely to be able to get a, a foot in the door there. And actually, people who live in local communities, they want local. They don't necessarily want a centralised feed. So I think what we're finding, certainly with commercial radio, is people are tuning into big commercial stations because they want to listen to the music that they play but actually they're not tuning into them for the local information in the way they used to and that's much more driven now I think on the ground by community stations so there mm. might be th- things like that in your area and, and that would be a, a great great to build up a, a relationship with it's, it's more difficult with television because you need something brilliantly visual but that doesn't yeah, mean it's yeah. impossible so, so for example if, if at Christmas you do say um, you've got Mary and a donkey walking through the streets or something like that is it to, to lead to a, a crib service or something Perfect. similar. That's the sort of thing, isn't it, mm. Joel? That's like really visual. Yeah, totally. Something that they can they can show that's going to have going to give them a story without having to say anything. That's what TV's built for, really. Correct. It's pictures, a thousand words, but a video is a thousand pictures, and that's a thousand words, a thousand times, a million. Oh, that's deep. Oh, yeah, I'm no, not no. sure I can cope with that. <laughs> video, <laughs> do it. So, I mean, Harbour FM is interesting. Just just to think local because they I, I've seen them along. Mm. So, I used to live in you don't know anymore, but used to live in a village that had an annual kind of day yeah and um, i've seen harbour fm there with their outside broadcast i hasten to call it unit um outside broadcast transit yeah i think it is it's like it's a small mini hdv i think okay there you go and um i mean if so if you've got a family fun day at church you can invite them along can you yeah absolutely yeah and they may well come along absolutely right so i think there is that they are looking for local content yeah and if you can help to provide that local content that's all to the good Mm. so um tips then you you said there are a couple of tips you know tricks of the trade so to speak Mm. what Mm. sorts of things should we be thinking about in terms of of getting stuff into the local media can i talk about the five w's so get a pen it sounds like you're prepared yeah get a pen who what when why where who, what, when, why, where. It's really important that you get that into the top line of anything you send to the local media, whether that is press, uh, radio or or television. So they want to know who, uh, who are you talking about? uh, What is that person or or church doing? uh, When is that happening? uh, Where is it happening? uh, And why is it happening? You've got to try and get that into into your top line. So the reasons why something is happening is as important as what's happening. But the five W's is a great kind of principal tip because a journalist will get hundreds of emails a day and they might read the first couple of sentences. So if you can get all that into your first sentence, Mm. he or she will then want to read on because they know it's actually 
relevant to the patch that they're covering. So who, what, when, why, where. If you take nothing else from this podcast <laughs> about engaging, particularly with traditional media, the five W's is a, is a great top yeah. tip. I'd say um, thinking about personal stories would be quite in- important as well. Of course, yeah, as, tell us as, long about as, that, yeah. as long as a person is happy to have their story told. Mm. Personal stories are really powerful for people. And you'll, you'll find if you flick through a newspaper, look on on uh, internet feeds, it's full of people and what's happened to someone, how has their life changed, what have they gone through and, all, and who supported them and all that kind of stuff. So if there's a real, a real great personal story that you've got in your church that's uh, going to put out what, what you're doing in your church in the community that's going to be able to tell that story through a person, then that's something really uh, helpful to think about. Great. And a very practical question, word count, if you're sending something into local um, local press, yeah, not, I, not a thousand words. Not a thousand presumably. words. I, I try and keep it to a side of A4 at the absolute maximum and not like font size eight, but font size <laughs> uh, 10 or 12. Uh, Double least. spaced. I mean, th- 300 words is an ideal yeah. length. Um, you can go a little bit uh, longer than that. Um, and going back to the personal story element, that's a great thing to put further down your kind of what I'll call a press release um, is, you, you know, a quote from the protagonist who is the the who in your in your top mm. line, because that, that is then the personal story. So when we did the piece about our new pastor, of course, we had quotes from the pastor in the in, in the article. It would have been daft, daft not yeah. to. Yeah. So I'm going to put you both on the spot now. Um, 2022 is the FIEC's 100th anniversary. It is. Formed in 1922. Mm. Um, we're a local charity. We're, we operate in Market Harbour. So it happens to be where um, FIC Towers is. Mm. Call it FIC Towers. It's just the just the two floors. Two but floors. Um, FIC <laughs> Towers um, located in Market Harbour. Um, how, how can we make something of that with a local press? Is that an opportunity to, to get something out? What do you think, Phil? Um, I think yes and no. Um, I'm probably more leaning towards no than yes. And I okay. only say that because we've not always been based here. So it's not true to say. It's that not a kind a, of big yeah, local interest exactly, story in that so, way. So we're not a Market Harbour charity since 1922. We've been in Harbour, I think, since 2005, okay. which means we've not quite got the history in the town. of. And there are some big big name businesses from this town. So Jules, uh, the big clothing brand, is a Market Harbour um, a business and, and they make um, huge amounts of hay with that quite rightly and say, this is our, we're true to our roots and this is why we're, 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 based, and we're based here and this is important to us. I don't think we can quite say that yeah. about the FIEC. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say the 100th anniversary is not important, but there'd probably be more creative ways okay. of promoting it than, than going down that kind yeah. of local no, angle. That's helpful. I so, I, so what I'm taking from that actually is we do need a sense of realism mm. about the ways that we're trying to connect. You know, I think if if we, for example, think we're going to be able to get a story in the paper every week, mm. it's just unrealistic, isn't it? I think so, unless you've so, got interesting things to say every week. Now, yeah. of course, we the gospel's interesting. We <laughs> want the gospel to go out every week. We want to do that from our pulpits. We want to do that in our in our church gatherings. But I think we need to be realistic that unless we've got interesting local content that's happening every week, we will we will struggle to, to do that. And ultimately, you'd then be competing against all the other people who are doing that. So your local yep. politicians, yep. Um, you know, your, your local councils, they're all throwing things into the local media mix every week yep. um, mm. so you'd be competing with this so let me just throw stuff. that back at you so let's say um, our local MP mm. we invite him along to a you know birthday lunch yep. for the FIC that's yep. a slightly different story then isn't it correct I think that's that's when you're being really creative then about how you are seeking to report it so you're not suddenly saying here's a charity based in Harbour that's 100 years old which perhaps falls over when you dig into it but what you're saying is the local MP has attended a you know a, a celebratory gala mm. lunch or whatever it might be and that's a slightly different angle so you so then you're reporting the 100th anniversary but it's not the top line in quite the same way because you're sure. reporting yeah. an event yeah. that's part of it yeah. and uh, do you agree with phil yes yes <laughs> that's good that's no, great. i would say, right I, say right I would say anniversaries is a really good idea actually yeah, agreed, to be to be, said, to be fair whether yeah. it's uh, fic of course that's a big thing for us next year but if your church has a particular anniversary a 25 50 7500 coming up then that's a great local yeah. story because agreed. another one local history is really helpful mm. especially if you've got old photos mm. to send in alongside the new photo okay. of how has the place changed that's a really good yeah. story yeah. That I think people roll, roll call in. of pastor on the wall so if, so if mm. churches have got to 100 years 125 years and perhaps they keep a record of all the, the men who've have pastored the church over the years. There's all sorts of ways you can be creative with it. But yeah, I totally agree with yeah. that. Anniversaries are a great opportunity. Um, we're slightly running out of time. So let's just press on to new media, Joel. Yeah. What do we mean by new media? 
new media would be uh, the internet really is the biggest technological advance. Um, but as I said earlier on, int the internet has equalized media for anyone. So in the past, the BBC were the, the kind of national government backed big broadcaster and they were the only one who could really reach the whole of the country. But now I can get my phone out, go on Twitter and I've reached however many people who are going to be able to see it. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what the new media is. And I think especially it means that it's equalised and it's a great opportunity for churches because before maybe the church in the 50s getting a local church into a national BBC, is never, it's just never going to happen really. But now there's a great opportunity because of the internet and because of the new media that is so available to different people and because anyone can really make media and anyone can send their own message out there it's a big opportunity for so what's that going to look so. like just give just paint us a picture so let, let's um, make it specific let's think about next easter passion for life got some you know really exciting events planned in the church what what might engagement through new media look like for a church yeah well the new media is not only the broadcasters but how people are receiving the media as well and the general population will now be online really or the newspapers and radio and tv as we, as we said are a big big part of that so if you can think about who do i want to reach with my events for easter where are they where are they going to be and where are they going to where they're going to get their media from. It could be Facebook, for example, or it could be Instagram. So you've got to think, okay, well, how can we get our, our message to those people where they're at on Facebook and Instagram? So Facebook advertising, for example, is a really great way to target people locally. So in fact, Facebook. there's a story, Phil, isn't there, on the website about yeah, yeah, just that? Yeah, and by um, Mike Judge, yeah, wasn't Mike, it? Yeah, mm -hmm. Mike Judge did that for us. It was really helpful in terms of how you use Facebook advertising yeah. effectively. You'll yeah. find that on the website. I think they the, used it to, to, for a, um, a kids' club, didn't the, they? Yeah, a holiday Bible club, yeah, something like that, yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah, and they were able yep. to very specifically target it to those in the area who have children under the age of such yeah. and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, I interrupted you, Joel. I was going to say was exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> you can target down to a, the very specific location, to a specific type of people, families, or are they older people, or whatever it might be. You can do all sorts of things like that. And it's that, that's what new media is, and that's how you can really get your message to the people who want to hear it, rather than in a newspaper where... It's on one page out of ninety, and then it only get only reaches X amount of people. So it's, the opportunities are great. It's probably a whole other podcast on how terrifying that is as well. Yes, yes, <laughs> quite, yes. Um, Phil, just a question on that. You know, I'm um, most FIC churches are kind of in a medium sized bracket. Um, mm. in a smaller or medium sized church, that all feels a bit overwhelming. Mm. Kind of thing that you know a large church might be on top of with kind of lots of young adults, perhaps. Um, perhaps in my my small to medium church, it just feels a bit like whoa. You know, mm. I can't. I can't employ someone to do that. I can't possibly do that. Is, is it completely out of reach for, for a smaller to medium church? I don't think so, because I think the principles remain the same. So I think you've just got to have a go. Uh, and I think this idea that you need to uh, employ somebody or, or find some sort of expert who can do that for you, it, stick to the principles we've talked about, the five W's, those personal stories uh, and crafting something uh, based on that is a really good starting point. And after all, most preachers are storytellers in some way. That's exactly what we do when we we stand in the pulpit and we we uh, preach God's word. We are talking about the wonderful ways in which the Bible uh, applies to life. And that, that's not dissimilar to what we're doing when we do that kind of thing. You just got to do it in a written form, perhaps rather than an orated form. It's interesting that um, where I live in Harper, we live on a kind of new estate, mm. one of these um, sort of uh, slightly anonymous, mm. um, bland new estates that get um, panned in the press all the time. Um, but it has quite a, its own, it has its own identity. And um, interestingly, we have our own Facebook page. Yeah. And in a, in a world actually where Facebook usage is dwindling, um, the community group part of Facebook is actually growing mm. and it's, it's very vibrant kind of people just um, often complaining about stuff, frankly, mm. <laughs> and dogs, especially. It, it all went off yesterday. I tell you, when someone posted a comment about a dog, it all kicked <laughs> off on our local Facebook page. But actually, um, uh, Johnny and I who live, uh, Johnny Prime and I who live in the, on the same estate, we've put stuff there that church is doing. Yeah, yeah. And it's quite a good way actually just to engage yeah. individual for individuals to engage. It doesn't require someone specifically in the church, does it, to be working on it? Yeah, someone who who already does that. So if you know if there's someone who uses Facebook and they enjoy it, then that's the perfect person to sure. say, well, how about yeah. would you be interested in doing this kind of thing? And that mm -hmm. kind of local community Facebook groups is a great example of thinking where are the people we want to reach? Let's go to where they are and they're in that Facebook group. So why don't we join in? Yeah, great. Um, Phil, um, some last tips. Um, so I'm a local church leader. Mm. I'm, I'm not doing anything about this at the moment. One or two things that I could just take on board, take away and perhaps put into practice simple things. Um, so I think look at the um, calendar, look at the things that are in the diary and work out what of these can I um, look to my local press, local media to 
help support or, or indeed to, to let them know about. Don't let things pass and then think as an afterthought, oh, if only, if only mm. we'd, we'd, uh, we'd put that out into the, the, the local media. You know, could you put adverts in the local papers? Could you pay for leaflets to be put in the local papers that get pushed through people's doors? And um, that's a, a much cheaper way um, than you might think of getting the, your message into people's homes. And it's better than asking all your uh, members to sort of fly over estates and stuff. It's, it's not, it's not ridiculously expensive you could look at that kind of thing there's always ways of doing it we um just a little story about that we in the middle of lockdown we had our first in-person service at easter mm. and we recorded um a local radio advert to be mm. using our commercial radio station we provided a script they basically provided the voiceover they got someone to do it for us it cost us a hundred pounds i think yeah, yeah. and it was put out quite a few times and you could hear it actually on the radio as an advert yeah and w we were surprised how cheap it was mm -hmm. um but actually how how professionally they put it together and how mm. quickly it was put together. Really quite surprising, I think, yeah, but very yeah, effective. Absolutely. Mm. So it's not as expensive as you think, so it's well worth yeah. looking into. Joel, any last tips from you? Yeah, just quickly on that one. With the social media advertising, you can start by a pound, one pound, and it'll reach like 50 people maybe. Mm. So that one, again, is great for kind of just want to do little baby steps. But I think the main thing I would say is to kind of think long term. So even if you if you manage to do one, one if you get something into the local paper or whatever it might be, and you don't really see anything back from it, well, that's okay because it's a, it's a drip feed. And if there's a few things, and even if they kind of cut out your gospel part, it's a drip feed. The church is getting out there to people and you never know down the line, you might be like, oh, I heard about that church. Mm -hmm. I've got something that's going on in my right. life. Okay. I need to, I need to go to them. And it's just kind of the drip feed in the back of their heads. And it's just um, also cumulative, isn't it? So you, you yeah. you're describing, so actually you, you build over time. Certainly. Yeah. And it might be the radio and then the newspaper and then a social media thing. And it just kind of builds up and builds up and builds up. I'd probably say as well, if you're writing something and sending it off, pray as you do it. Mm. It might seem a bit weird yeah, sending an email and praying. <laughs> but you never know. You might think it's never yeah. going to do anything, but you never know what God might do with that email. Absolutely. And make sure you get into the media for the right reasons but that's probably another podcast again <laughs> so, Joel thanks very much for your help Phil yeah. thanks very much for your help uh, my name's Adrian thank you for joining us on Independence the FIEC podcast look forward to uh, joining with you next time see you next time